Hello, thank you for the opportunity to speak today at this your 38th annual general meeting. While I certainly wish we could all be together, nonetheless, I'm pleased to be able to provide you with an update virtually on CFA activities and priorities. Looking at your agenda, I see you have some great presentations and Clara Hughes, a hometown legend, should be an inspirational wrap up to your two days of meetings. Before I start my update, I wanted to say your new general manager, Brenna Mahoney, has been fantastic to work with. We're approaching two years since the CFA board has been able to sit down together. We have all mastered the Zoom calls and Bill Campbell continues to represent the concerns of CAP well at our virtual table. This past year has continued to bring significant challenges to many farmers in a range of commodities and regions. While we're all still living with COVID and the ongoing supply chain issues, farmers in Manitoba have had to deal with the devastating 2021 drought and heat dome that have created additional and costly burdens that we know farmers have had to shoulder directly. Unforeseen weather events are part of this industry, but it has been especially difficult to see as the 2021 drought and heat continued for months on end with no reprieve. Although this is the worst drought the prairies have seen in 70 years, the resilience and determination shown by prairie farmers is amazing. At one Zoom board meeting, the idea to reinvigorate Hay West came from our usual opening chit chat about weather. With drought in the west and lots of hay in the east, we felt we could do something. Since last fall, CFA staff have been working to communicate the program, organize shipments, secure funding, and move as much hay as possible to those most impacted by the drought. While we know that the Hay West program could never completely replace the huge hay void that the drought left, CFA's Hay West program has so far shipped approximately 32 million pounds of hay, helping to continue to feed about 17,000 cattle and we will continue to run this program for as long as it is needed and as long as we have funding to do so. Apart from the drought, ongoing supply chain issues, in particular trucks, have also got CFA's attention. We have been lobbying government to detail the potential impacts on farmers, the food supply chain, and consumers that these regulations may cause. While we understand there is a need to protect public safety, some of these measures may overall do more harm than good to the Canadian public. Apart from these critical issues, I'd like to go into some of the other work CFA has done throughout 2021 and into 2022. The 2021 SNAP election gave CFA an opportunity to really push our messaging throughout the election on our three key priorities. Increased funding through the next agricultural policy framework, leveraging agriculture's environmental benefits, and investing in critical infrastructure. CFA has been developing its messaging for the next policy framework and has worked together with stakeholders across agriculture to identify our common objectives, principles and priorities, recognizing Canadian agriculture's role in the fight against climate change will fundamentally shape our sector and Canada's economy moving forward. In late 2021, CFA and a coalition of national farm associations wrote to the FPT ministers, highlighting these commonalities, and then we reinforced those in person during the FPT meeting held in Guelph. Recognizing agriculture's potential as a climate solutions provider and the demands this is placing on Canadian producers, we proposed a path forward to ensure Canadian agriculture meets this pivotal moment head on and comes out securing greater global leadership, trust and economic prosperity. This path requires a coordinated FPT approach to leverage our economic and environmental capacities on four key pillars investing in climate solutions, measuring the triple bottom line of sustainability, economic, environmental, and social, optimizing agriculture's contributions, maximizing access to incentives and credits. The next policy framework will be a foundational support for Canadian agriculture's trajectory, and CFA is working to ensure our members' voice is one of the most listened to at the table. 
Fundamentally, CFA's position is that these environmental policies and measures should not negatively impact farmers' profitability nor our ability to maintain and even improve yields and quality. Labor. As we see labor shortages beginning to affect other industries, we can only hope this increased attention will help drive long-term and effective solutions. CFA, for its part, is very pleased to be a partner with CARC and other organizations to help develop a national workforce strategy for agriculture and food and beverage manufacturing over the next two years, aiming to address many of the chronic labor issues farmers and processors face. We are also working with a variety of stakeholders in developing a grocery code of conduct for Canada. Similar successful initiatives across the world have shown to create a healthier food supply chain with more money in each link, resulting in more overall growth in those countries' food systems. These two initiatives are particularly important as they look to address and relieve long-standing issues in agriculture that have been obstructing our growth for decades. The 2023 policy framework is a key opportunity to position our sector as an economic engine and an impactful ally in the fight against climate change. CFA is working on projects that have the potential to deliver tangible, positive, fundamental shifts in the business environment of Canadian agriculture. I wish the membership and team at CAP the very best in 2022 and that we will all get through this next wave together. We will continue our steadfast commitment to the Hay West program to assist as many Manitoba producers as possible. In these rugged times, don't forget to take care of yourself and to check in with your friends and neighbors. We hope to see you face to face at the CFA AGM, which is taking place in Ottawa, March 2nd and 3rd this year. Thank you.